I'm John Fenstewar, writer of the blog Educated Guest and host of the website Top Ed Thoughts on Public Education in California, a forum on California education policy. Join me while I interview interesting and informed leaders in education. You'll learn a lot in 10 minutes or less. I'm John Fensterwater, and we're back with uh, Assemblymember Tom Tor Torlickson, who is candidate for Superintendent of Public Instruction. When we left, Tom, we were talking about uh, funding of schools and um, uh, how to settle the Robles uh, Wong lawsuit. And I have a question. Should, should um, certain schools, should there be uh, more funding per students for, for minority and, and, uh, and special education students? Should we revise how we fund uh, schools? We should, because the current system is unfair and just all over the map unequal. But uh, how to do that in a way that doesn't create uh, a war among districts mm -hmm. by, by taking from one district to help another district doesn't work. But I think over time, as the budget grows for education, as our economy recovers, uh, we need to have a, a look at how to differentially invest to where we'll get the biggest bang for the buck and attack the dropout rate, the despicable, uh, the wasteful, disgraceful dropout rate and the achievement gap. And so uh, I've done a number of bills, the Quality Education Improvement Act, as, as you mentioned earlier, we targeted the lower two deciles of schools, the lower 20% to invest that extra money. And we know we're saving future dropouts by that investment early. And the same um, with the after school program we targeted. And let's say we go to preschool, which I am for preschool. I'm gonna fight for preschool for four year olds to, and we should have it all the way down to age one and two. But we can't start off with preschool for everyone, but we need to target it. And so targeting it in the areas where there's highest poverty, highest risk of dropout, highest English learner challenges, uh, we know that we'll have greater success and those young people will have self-confidence and be able to keep up with the curriculum in first, second, and third grade if they get a good preschool. Mm -hmm. So those are examples of where I think we need to target our, our funding and, and look at uh, helping also, you know, all students succeed. Yeah. Uh, having exciting science programs so students in the higher performing schools will be channeled towards those great jobs in engineering and the solar economy or the uh, energy, new energy economy or in computers. Right. You know, there's been talk um, that uh, under No Child Left Behind there's been a narrowing of the curriculum. What do, what do you think in general the uh, federal thrust in education under uh, President Bush and now under President mm -hmm. Obama, and what do you think of Race to the Top? Should we uh, apply for a third time if there's a third round? Sure. Well, uh, number one, uh, we should leave No Child Left Behind behind uh, and, and start fresh in terms of looking at, at, at what really works in terms of I incentives. So uh, I think the bubble test focus just on math and on language arts has been detrimental and has pushed out art, music, drama, some of the sports and physical activities that that actually get young people excited in exploring their inner talents in other areas that will attach them to school and, and help them focus on careers and opportunities for the future. So I think uh, that's, that's something we need to look at, a broadened set of measurements of what is an effective school, what is success? Is it just numbers on some standardized test in two subject areas? What about science? What about citizenship? Um, what about uh, the attendance and retention of students? If, if students are staying in school instead of dropping out, they should be rewarded. The test scores aren't gonna go up if you have 10% more of your students who would otherwise drop out stay. Their scores are gonna be low and your school's scores will be low. But shouldn't we reward schools for that? So I, I am fighting for a more robust, more comprehensive set of criteria for evaluating. Mm -hmm. As to race to the top, yes, we should apply again. I believe that it was too top down, it was sort of pushed and shoved on the school districts in California with unknown repercussions for if you signed up, you know, and get $5 million, do you owe $3 million more? Um, there was a lot of confusion about that. I believe that the new superintendent, bringing people together, working with the new governor, we will bring the teachers, we will bring parents, mm -hmm. business leaders, labor leaders to the table and hammer out a plan on how we can go after the federal money and develop along with it what I consider one of my very top priorities is a whole model of accountability, really looking at accountability, the school board's accountability, the effectiveness of the principal, the effectiveness of teachers, and getting consensus on how to measure 
those degrees of effectiveness. Mm -hmm. That, I think, can be a, a springboard for a successful application to get federal money. I'm glad to see President Obama putting billions of dollars aside for education. Right. That didn't happen under No Child Left Behind. So I believe we need to forge a California solution that will not uh, usurp our local control or our local prerogatives to build the organic community-based approach to implementing those reforms. Part of uh, Race to the Top application was a commitment that you would uh, redo the way you uh, evaluate teachers and consider uh, test scores as part of that performance, perhaps uh, using it to determine uh, uh, pay and, and tenure and other things. What, what's your view of, of, of uh, the, the current way we evaluate teachers? How should it be changed? Well, it should be a comprehensive look at effectiveness of the school and the school resources of the principal, the principal's leadership, and the teachers. And any metric or any way of measuring should uh, be designed for a specific purpose. The STAR test, which I was one of the few Democrats who voted for it, because I believe in school accountability. When Pete Wilson mm -hmm. started it, I said, we need to have a system of measuring the success of students. But this is groups of students over time. It was not designed as a tool to measure teacher effectiveness. Uh, so I think as we get everyone to the table, including the hardworking, uh, valiant teachers across California, they're uh, performing outstanding work every day despite all the cuts, um, we get to the table and we, we get a consensus around what is the measuring device and how much should be based on some kind of test that we don't have yet and what should be done on classroom observation. Yeah. You know, I, I was a teacher in a Title I community in uh, an area that uh, needed a lot of help for the students, uh, but that, the principal came into my classroom, observed, right. wrote detailed notes, sat down with me, counseled me on what was going well and what needed improvement. We don't have enough of that today. Our evaluation system is something of, in a shambles. And so just to point the finger in any one direction mm -hmm. is not correct. Now merit yeah. pay, I'm not in favor of it because it's proven not to work over many years of trying merit pay. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a, these fad reforms that come and go alternating decades. I think um, we so need to be very cautious about that and, and look at things that are proven that work. Outstanding teachers, if you could determine who those are, they should not be paid more than others in your view? I, I believe there are ways to, to you know, honor and recognize the outstanding teachers. The sad fact is, John, as you know, a lot of the studies of teacher evaluations, the new teacher project looked at 40,000 teacher evaluations. Uh, the excellent teachers got no more recognition than the teachers uh, in the middle or, or the right. bottom in terms of performance. And so figuring out ways to honor those teachers as a high school you know, science and health teacher, mm -hmm. I found that the thing that was most rewarding is when I was given the equipment I needed, the lab materials, field trip money, things that could right. engage my students in exciting learning. So you've been um, uh, supported by the California Teachers Association uh, considerably mm -hmm. supporting your campaign. How do we know that you can be independent of that union once you were, if you were mm -hmm. a superintendent? Well, I think I have a very proven track record that's uh, an open book and here in the Bay Area I was uh, widely and strongly supported mm -hmm. because I, I'm known to be an independent thinker and I am a teacher and I am a professional and I work with teachers and I'm glad to have the backing of the teachers union mm -hmm. but more than that, I'm very glad to have other professional teachers excited about the chance to to do their profession and improve their mm -hmm. their learning and uh, I have the most diverse backing of any statewide mm -hmm. uh, candidate this year Republicans and Democrat business leaders okay. here in Silicon Valley and in the Bay Area and across California that we're going to bring to the table together. Tom, we've enjoyed talking with you and look forward to speaking with you again. It's been a delightful conversation. Tom Torlickson, Tor candidate for uh, Superintendent of Public Instruction. I'm John Fensterwald. Thanks for watching.